Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to continue our deep dive into the standard library for the algorithms. And with that said, let's go ahead and take a look. Now, I've been looking at a lot of the different algorithms. So again, as always, check out your progress on course.mshot.io, free to sign up. And there's other great courses here if you want to scroll around and take a look. But with that said, let's go ahead and go into algorithms. And today I want to talk about some more non-modifying sequence operations here. And in particular, I want to talk about some that have to do with counting. Now, we're going to look at uh, these three particular ones today, and we'll look at count and count if later. So make sure you uh, check out the channel for that video. But basically what these algorithms do is check if some predicate is true. Again, that's some tests that we can write here and see if, well, it passes one of these tests, essentially. So let's go ahead and take a look at all of, any of, or none of. And these are often operations that you might want to do, for instance, if you're performing some sort of query on the data, for instance. So you want to make sure that all of your values are positive, for instance. That could be uh, a test that we're going to write and I'll demonstrate for this. Or if any of the values might be um, flagged, for instance, for having old or stale data here. Okay, And there's different ways that you could uh, write these with the uh, predicate that is given here. Okay, so each of these are going to pretty much look uh, very similar in form. Again, looking at the C20 versions where we take in a range uh, or a pair of two iterators, so the beginning and the end of that range that we want to look at, and then the actual test that we have here. So let's go ahead and start with all of here. Let's just go ahead and write it out, and then we'll revisit this page and look at some of the complexity and so on here. So I think I'm going to need uh, three tests for these three uh, different functions here. So let's go ahead and just set that up here. And let's go ahead and start with all of here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do here for this uh, particular uh, lesson here, let's just go ahead and give ourselves a vector. Uh, I'm going to do something like this here. And uh, this would be enough here. But again, I usually like to specify the type here as follows. And let's just go ahead and write uh, all of and again, we need our uh, from the beginning of our range to the uh, end. Now, again, um, sometimes I've been a little bit lazy here. I could actually write these uh, again. These are non-modifying. So const iterator is probably a better uh, use case here. And then our predicate here, OK, or just our value. So for instance, let's go ahead and see uh, here. So all of here. Uh, let's see. I think this is going to require us to actually write a uh, predicate for all of these. Okay, so it's going to check if the predicate is true for all of the elements in our range here. Okay, and again, this has gotten really convenient with modern C++, thus the utility of the algorithm library, um, and that we could just write this uh, as a lambda here. Uh, and let's see, and these functions themselves are all going to return true or false if it satisfies the condition. Okay, so let's go ahead and write a little uh, lambda function here. Uh, so brackets for the capture. Um, the value that we are taking in here, uh, I'm working with integers here, um, and I need to return um, some condition here. So I'm going to just return uh, i greater than zero here. Okay, uh, and this is returning a true or a false value. Um, so we could just use a bool here. Most of the time, you're also going to see these as auto. Uh, and folks tend to like to use auto in case uh, there's any sort of update uh, to the code or, or the types or these types of things. But uh, this is very clearly a uh, Boolean value here. So let's see. Um, all of, um, and I'm just going to say greater than zero. That's our, our test here. And let's return the result. So we'll get a one if that's true or a zero if false. Uh, and we can reduce this down here a little bit here. And let's go ahead and just show you what I'm compiling with. Let's see if I made any silly mistakes. One silly mistake here. Uh, in fact, there's just going to be one vector for these tests. So let's see that. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, well, let's go ahead and uh, this test pass. Let's go ahead and make the output just a little bit cleaner for us. All the values, in fact, are greater than uh, zero here. So this test passed here. OK, so here's a little uh, test that we wrote, our predicate. Uh, and that's it. That's all there is to all of. So let's go ahead and uh, take a little bit of a look here. Uh, the complexity, again, for these is just going to be basically the length of the range that we're looking over. In many cases, you're going to be looking over the whole range, so O of n, and then however long it takes for us to do the predicate. So something like our predicate here, where we're just returning 
uh, or doing one test here is basically a constant time operation here for a primitive type here. So um, basically that's an O of N algorithm. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and just kind of take a look here at some of the other examples here. Uh, see what's in the documentation, see if there's anything interesting. Uh, yeah, they're doing similar tests of uh, values being uh, even or odd or these types of things here or divisible by. Um, I think that's good. Um, I think folks tend to use these sometimes as a filter, um, or I shouldn't say filter, um, but maybe as a way to test again or query data to see if it's uh, in a valid state, for instance, because you know all of some condition must be uh, passing. That could be one use case for these. Um, so that's uh, it there. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the others uh, that we have here. So we're going to have uh, any of, so we can see the difference, and uh, none of. Okay, so let's go ahead and write those. Uh, and I'm basically just going to copy this test here. And I'll actually change our data uh, around just a little bit. Uh, let's put in some negative values in here. And, you know, later on in my program, I decide instead of all the things needed to pass, maybe just any of them. Okay, uh, so that just means one or more. Uh, I believe it, uh, an implementation might early terminate as soon as one uh, passes. Uh, but let's go ahead and see uh, if this works. And in fact, uh, at least one of these values is greater than zero, even though we have some negatives here. Uh, let's just go ahead and repeat this example for uh, none of. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and do none of these uh, pass here. And again, it's nice. It reads well uh, as far as the code goes. Uh, let's document this here. Uh, none of these are greater than zero. Um, and let's go ahead and make these all negative here, just so we have one that doesn't uh, pass. So there's our test number two. Um, and let's see, uh, whoops, let's see. All these are negative. None of these are greater than greater than zero. Okay, yep, that is correct. Uh, so we get a true here. Um, and then let's just go ahead and make one uh, positive here. And we'll see that that flips to false now, okay? Because at least one of these is greater than zero. So none of or any of, um, you know, are effectively um, pretty similar operations, right? They're uh, inverses of each other. Um, but one or the other might, you know, read a little bit better in your code. So that's just a little recommendation on which you might use, all right? Um, so these are what I would consider uh, sort of counting algorithms. Um, so all of any of here we do a test here and none of here okay so pretty simple especially if you've been following along with this series again you're seeing some of the patterns in our algorithms library um, and this is just a nice uh, test here for uh, looking through your containers and asking a question about some of your data all right folks with that said i'm gonna go ahead and end this video there so three more algorithms that we've knocked out here this time we're able to uh, count things or sort of i use this more as a, a querying type of operations all right folks hope you're enjoying the series and as always thank you for your time and attention i'll look forward to your discussions below and i'll see you in the next one